Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 9th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you an overview of NOAA's July climate assessment for the United States. And I'm going to do my best to provide a, a larger climate context to give you an idea of what was going on for the US in July, in addition to this excellent and very useful information that I recommend everybody look at from NOAA. So according to NOAA, July of 2018 was the 11th warmest July on record for the United States, tying 1998. And there's, there's, a, there's quite a bit of information involved in what's going on with the U.S. climate. But before I dig into that, I'd like to highlight an unusual summer pattern in the jet stream that does have some climate change fingerprints on it. Now, this pattern features a, a strong and persistent ridge in the western U.S., and a deep running trough in the eastern US. We've talked about this feature a number of times before, but I, I just want to emphasize this feature because based on what some of the science is now reporting, it looks like this feature is, is going to become a, a more and more dominant issue in our weather. And that's due to a number of climate change related factors. The first factor is melt in the Arctic appears to generally enhance, and this is ice, sea ice melt in the Arctic, enhance the potential for waviness in the jet stream. The second feature is that loss of sea ice in the Arctic as well, according to recent science, has a handshake with sea surface temperature warming in the Pacific, meaning that there's a kind of a, a feedback process that occurs between the two in which sea ice loss appears to lend strength to Pacific Ocean warming and Pacific Ocean warming tends to lend strength to increased rates of sea ice loss. Now there's some new science on this and I'm gonna talk about the new science later, but that's just another factor. Now, warming Pacific Oceans and less sea ice tend to enhance ridge patterns over the U.S. West. Now, the third factor that I want to talk about that is climate change related in relationship to this dipole and ridge trough pattern in the U.S. is Greenland melt. And as Greenland tends to melt more and more, you get this cool pool of water in the North Atlantic, which can tend to cool off regional sections of the North Atlantic and drive the jet stream south over the eastern U.S. Now, I would like to just put a pin in this issue with Greenland melt and say that numerous climate models have shown this regional cooling as a result of Greenland melt. But overall, this counter trend cooling is an aspect of overall global warming. Now, I know that that can sound as a bit of a misnomer, but what's happening with Greenland is that the balance of hot and cold with Greenland, with the Greenland ice sheet, and with temperature balance in the North Atlantic is changing. Greenland melt is a signature of heat buildup in Greenland. Fresh surface waters in the North Atlantic allow the North Atlantic to pull in more heat and transfer that heat into the deeper ocean waters of the North Atlantic, also having an impact on ocean conveyor systems. So this is an energy balance change signature, and it's one of the reasons why scientists have 
been so keen on talking about climate change as climate change and not just as global warming. Now, global warming drives climate change, but you can have climate features that run counter to the global warming trend in certain regions and at certain layers of the atmosphere and ocean. And this is one of those features that will also, unfortunately, if it continues to, to progress, help to drive instability for weather patterns in the U.S., particularly on the, on the U.S. East Coast. So some things to think about as we look at this climate assessment. I know I've talked about it for a little while, so let's, let's get into the NOAA National Climate Assessment. Now, some selected features, I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm just going to go through some of them. Just to provide some highlights, uh, you can look at the NOAA climate page and find and dig into this a bit more. Is that NASA? I'm sorry, that Alaska was tied for the fifth, fifth hottest July on record. Uh, California saw some record hottest temperatures during July. And Pennsylvania had its wettest July on record with 176% of average precipitation. Now, the heat out west and the fires are indicative of the ridge patterns that we've seen that have some climate change fingerprints on them. And the record rainfall in parts of the east are also in some ways indicative of influences related to deepening trough patterns across the east and the Greenland changes and North Atlantic changes that we talked about. So those are fingerprints for some of the severe weather we have seen in the east. Overall, I'd like to look at some of these temperature maps and precipitation maps. So looking at regional maximum, I'm sorry, regional average temperatures, the California and Nevada region saw its hottest temperatures on record, and much of the West was much warmer than average, with warmer than average temperatures overall for the U.S. East and average temperatures for the central U.S. Now, certain regions varied a bit, but it does show you how the dipole is influencing U.S. weather patterns with cooler patterns in the East, although still some warmer temperatures, but much warmer temperatures in the West. As for precipitation, I just want to, I'm going to go ahead and dig into a bit more finer details for, for precipitation, which is, and, and some interesting aspects of precipitation that, that might seem to run a little bit counter to to some of the trends we've seen. But overall, we've seen much wetter than normal conditions in the east and drier conditions in the west. So overall, a signature of a climate dipole pattern with hotter conditions in the west, drier conditions, and more fire in the west, and wetter than normal conditions with cooler conditions in the east. So I encourage you to take a look at the NOAA climate data page and dig deeper into this report by NOAA. But overall, looks like a pattern that has a number of human-caused climate change fingerprints on it. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.